Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel, or if you're new here, welcome. Let me assure you, I don't want to be making a video today, but I try to leave some instructions and I'm not sure if people will understand what I was trying to explain, so alas, here we are, so let's get this over with so I can go take a nap or something. Anyway, this lesson, we're going to look at the second type of question relating to transformation, which is to propose a suitable sequence of transformation from the rules of the original function and the image. So that's question type two. Now, in some cases, it's very easy to tell what the transformation is, such as in this first example that I have on the screen here. And that's normally when the original function is pretty basic, or as in it's literally the base function. So you start from square root of x and you're going to 3 square root of x plus 1 minus 5, it should be very easy to tell what the transformation is. You basically have a dilation by a factor of 3 from the y-axis, and that's all the dilation and reflection that you have, followed by a translation of one unit to the left, so that's the x plus 1 here, and a translation of 5 unit up. So if you're given a questions such as this, I think you should be able to just read the transformation of the two rules without having to do any extra algebra. However, what we're really interested in today is developing a method that will work when your original function and your image function look something like this. So when they both a little bit more complicated, I really want you to have a foolproof method to tackle these kind of questions. So I will go through the steps that I do. Obviously, as the name of the subject suggests, there's more than one way to do the majority of questions in maths, but this is just one method that I will show you. So with this method, you're basically trying to compare x to x prime and y to y prime. So that's that's the end goal, essentially. And if you have an expression of x prime in terms of x and y prime in terms of y, you can suggest what the transformation is of that. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to sort of do some tidy up so that all the x transformations are on one side and all the y transformations are on the other side so that you can then compare the original function and the image. I'll show you what I mean. So with the original function, which is f, we have y equal to 2 square root of 3 minus 2x plus 1. So I'm going to move all the y transformation on the, onto the left side. So y minus 1 over 2 would equal to square root of 3 minus 2x. So this is f, okay? And I will do the same for the image, which is g. So y equal to 3 of square root of 2x plus 1 minus 5 which means y plus 5 over 3 would equal to square root of 2x plus 1. So this is step 1. You want to sort of isolate the x transformation and the y transformation. The most common mistake at this step that students tend to make is they tend to forget the dilation factor in front of the square root, which is just it's a y transformation, so you do have to take that into account. You, you see what I mean when I show you the whole thing. All right, so once you've done that, now is the actual comparison. So in order to be able to distinguish between the original function and the image, I'm just going to add x prime, y prime into the image part. You can do it right from the beginning as well if you want. So now I'm going to compare y to y prime. Okay, so I have y minus 1 over 2 equals to y prime plus 5 over 3. So that's a comparison between y and y prime. And then I'm going to do the same thing for x and x prime. You can ignore the square root at this point because obviously, I mean, you can write the square root in if you want, but if the thing under the, if the two square roots are equal to each other, then the expressions under the square root have to equal to each other as well. So it's, um, it's five. So now I can just have 3 minus 2x equals to 2x prime plus 1. So this is what I mean by comparing x to x prime, y to y prime. So that's step 2. And then step 3 is transposing. Now the main difference between this method and the previous type of question when we need to find the image is that 
At this step, you're actually transposing for x prime and y prime because you're trying to express x prime in terms of x and y prime in terms of y so that you can figure out what the transformation is to go from x to x prime and y to y prime. So I'm going to make... I'm going to make um, y prime the subject here. So I'm going to move the 3 first. So you have 3 over 2 of y minus 1 equal to y prime plus 5. Okay, so 3 over 2. And to be fair, it's it's up to you whether you... Um, I mean, I guess in this case, you do have to expand the brackets. But there are, in some situations, you don't necessarily have to. Um, and then it's just going to change the, the sequence of... the order of the sequence of transformation. So I have 3 over 2y, and then you have to move the 5, so that's 13 over 2. I apologize for any algebra mistake that I may make today. My brain is not working properly, but anyhow. So three. So we're going to move the 1, so we're going to have 2 minus 2x equal to 2x prime. And then divide everything by 2, so you have um, negative x plus 1. I just like to write the x first, equal to x prime. So this is your y transformation, and this is your x transformation. You should be able to draw up a transformation matrix from this expression fairly easily. Hopefully fairly easily. So you don't have an x dilation, but you have a reflection. And you have a y dilation of 3 over 2 x, y, and going to positive 1 and minus 13 over 2. So that's that's the technique. You basically start by moving. So you do you have to do a bit of tidy up. You know, tidy up is an understatement, I think. Uh, but you have to move all the y transformations on one side or the x transformation on the other so that you can easily compare x with x prime and y with y prime so that ultimately you can have an expression of x prime in terms of x and y prime in terms of y so that you can create your transformation matrix. I think this is probably the universal method that would work regardless of how complicated the two functions are. So just make sure you know how to use them. So that's example two. I think I have the energy for one more, so I will do one more for you. So this is example three. If you want to try it yourself, feel free to do it first and pause the video and then you can watch later and point out all algebra mistakes that I'm about to make. Um, anyway, so you have the original and the image here and they both square, you know, quadratic functions is what I'm about to say. So as um, similar to the previous example, I'm going to start by just tidy things up. So the original function is y equal to 2 x minus 1 square plus 3. So I'm going to move the 3 to the other side and then divide both side by 2. And then with the image, we have y equal to 6, 2 minus x over 3 squared plus 13. I think I'm going to put the x prime, y prime in right from here. And once again, you, you just need to separate the, the x and y transformations so that um, you can make an easy comparison later. It gets more interesting when you get to logarithm, exponential, and trigonometry for this type of question, but right now it's just the, the starting point. So don't be, uh, don't worry if you like these kind of questions, they will come back again and again. So you, you, you won't miss them. Anyway, so now we're going to do the comparison. So all the, the y has to be compared with the y prime. So y minus 3 over 2 equals to y prime minus 13 over 6. And I'm just going to drop the square. So I just have x minus 1 is being compared to 2 minus x prime over 3. So that's the, the x plus x prime. And then you need to transpose. So I think just with a lot of things, um, the main issue tends to be algebra for these kind of question. If you have to do it by hand. I do have to say though, I haven't really explored how to do these kind of questions with the cast. I tend to just do them by hand. And... You can use a cast to check whether the sequence of transformation that you propose later is correct if you have the cast available, but I tend to just start um, by head. All right. Oh my god, that's a four. I think my neck just cracked just then. Um, what am I doing? So 2 minus negative 1, 3 minus x equal to x prime over 3. I don't even know what I'm doing. 
I hope this is correct, by the way, because um, there's a fog in my brain right now. Let's see. Is that right? I think that's right. X minus 3 and then negative. Yeah, that, 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 should, that should be fine. Okay, and then you will have the matrix from that. Now, this is actually very, very good because in some cases when the question specify like a specific sequence, like if you need to propose a translation first or whatever form the answer requires you, you can very easily convert this fully expanded form to that. So for example, if the question specify that you need to propose a translation first, you, you should be able to work out what translation you're supposed to suggest. But I'm just going to go with the fully divided form here. I'll show you some other example maybe tomorrow when you're a bit more confident with this of um, the different restrictions that you may see in, in the way that the question is asked just to uh, make things a little bit more interesting, you know. This is just the mild version. And we'll look at, we'll go into the hot version and then the, the spicy version tomorrow. And I'm really only able to do the lemon and gut herb version today. Anyway, that's question two. Example three of the second type of question, I mean. You can tell my brain is like losing me. I can't even speak anymore. So I have three more examples, four, five, and six. Oof, look at this. Don't forget to complete the square, folks. And I think this is probably the main example when you really need to complete the square. Otherwise, it's very hard to compare x and x prime if there's a multiple x primes that appear and only one x that appears. And without completing the square, you're also not able to isolate an um, x transformation from the y transformation. So I would complete, complete the square at this step. And uh, just to make things fun, here is a hyperbola question. So three more examples. And uh, I will upload the solution as well, so you can check the solution after you're done. But that is it for this period. If you finish everything before the end of the period, just start homework questions on 3.7. And with that, I'm going to go take a nap. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.